Hi gang! Here's how you can control servo motors using a Raspberry Pi and the Maestro controller board from Pololu. I'm using the board in order to get smooth and precise servo movement, which is hard to do with the Pi in Linux alone. To talk to the board, I've written a Python module with the Maestro class and a Python demonstration program, so I'll talk about those two. This is the Micro Maestro 6-channel USB servo controller board, made by Pololu. It can control up to six servos at a time by plugging the servos into these pins. There are a few different ways to use it, but I'll focus on just one of them, using serial communication in UART mode. Here's the test circuit, temporarily installed on a piece of cardboard. The parts needed were of course a Raspberry Pi, in this case a Pi 3B, one or more servos, I have four Tower Pro SG90 plastic gear servos, a bunch of female jumper wires for connecting it all together, and the Maestro board. I also needed this voltage level shifter board, which I'll talk about. And here's the circuit diagram. I'm having the Maestro communicate with the Raspberry Pi using the Pi's TX and RX pins to do serial communication, what the Maestro documentation calls UART mode. Notice that the TX on the Pi goes to the RX on the Maestro board, and vice versa. The Maestro uses TTL logic for its serial communication meaning it uses 5 volts, but the serial I.O. pins on the Raspberry Pi use 3.3 volts for the logic. So I need some way to convert the 3.3 volts to 5 volts and vice versa. That's what this level shifter board is for. It's the BSS-138 from Adafruit. It can convert up to 4 signals, though I need only 2. I needed a way to connect the level shifter board to the rest of the circuit using jumpers. So I made this board that the level shifter plugs into. You can see how I made that in my video about working with pin headers. I can power the Maestro, the servo motors, and the level shifter through the Pi's 5 volt pin, but to reduce the load on the Pi, I decided to power it all directly from this RAV Power USB phone charger, or battery bank. To do that though, I had to make a special USB power cable, one with the two hole female pin header at one end, for plugging into the Maestro. I have a video that shows how I made that cable. That powers the servo motors, but to also have that power the Maestro board, I connect one of the servo positive voltage pins to the VIN pin. The Maestro manual suggests doing that by soldering a wire between those two points on the bottom of the board. Then you can solder another wire underneath to connect the VIN pin to the level shifter board to power that board. But since I'm using only four servos instead of six, I can spare two servo pins and instead of soldering, I use one jumper to connect the servo positive voltage pin to the VIN and another jumper to go from another servo positive voltage pin to the level shifter board. I also use the phone charger slash battery bank to power the Pi and I connect all the grounds. There's a little bit of configuration you might have to do for the Raspberry Pi. For the Raspberry Pi 2, the TX and RX ports are slash dev slash TTY AMA0 and for the Pi 3, it's slash dev slash TTY S0. But somehow they're related, because in either case, you need to go to the Pi's slash boot folder and look for a file called cmdline.txt. First make a backup of that file. Then edit it. Look for things like this with TTY AMA0 in them. These tell the kernel to use TTY AMA0. Delete that text if they're there. They may not be. Even if you're using a Pi 3 and slash dev slash TTY S0, there still seems to be permission issues if you don't do this. If anyone knows why, let us know in the video comments. Another possible issue, it wasn't for my version of the Pi 3, is that the GETTY program might also be using slash dev slash TTY AMA0. If that's the case, edit slash etc slash inetd and remove or comment out this line. I didn't have to do that for my Pi 3. Reboot your Pi to make these changes take effect. As I said, the programming language I'm using is Python. All the code you'll see here is available on my website, and there's a link to it in the video description. This is the Python module I wrote called maestrouart.py. In it is the class called maestrouart that contains the various functions you can use. There's one for getting errors, one for getting the servo motor position, for setting the speed, for setting the acceleration, and for setting the target position, which is where you want the servo motor to rotate to. At the bottom is some demo code for if you run the module itself. Notice that each function has plenty of comments explaining how to use it, though you may still have to refer to the Maestro board's documentation itself. Then I've also written a separate demonstration program, since you'll likely use the API that way. 
It starts by defining some variables with the minimum and maximum positions this demo will move the servo motor. Then it creates an instance of the class from the module. Notice that we pass the name of the serial port and baud rate. It's at this point that the serial port is opened. We don't expect any errors here, but this shows how to get error codes. Next we tell the board what we want the motor's acceleration to be. Again, the functions are described in detail in the comments in the module's code, as well as on the web page. Then we tell it what we'll want the motor speed to be. Then we get the current position of the motor. This code then checks if the motor is currently positioned at less than its halfway position. If it is, then we'll tell it to go to the maximum position. Otherwise, tell it to go to the minimum position. And this is the function that tells the motor to actually move to that position. The motor is now moving. Meanwhile, we close and exit. By running the code repeatedly, we get the motor to move back and forth. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more informative videos like this. You can support these videos either through Patreon or through a one-time donation. And if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or a comment below. See you soon.